Hi there, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware, and this, of course, is none other than Apple's iPhone 6 Plus. Both the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus sport essentially the same internal specs, so we thought we'd take a look at the iPhone 6 that is much more of a departure from the previous generation iPhone 5S, that being, of course, the more bodacious 5.5-inch iPhone 6 Plus. However, in this review, we'd like to cover a high-level comparison of three of the iPhone 6 Plus's primary competitors, notably the second-generation 5.2-inch Moto X, Samsung's venerable 5.1-inch Galaxy S5, and LG's 5.5-inch Super High-Res G3. More specifically, we're going to focus on design, build quality, display image quality, base-level user experience, and performance of the iPhone 6 Plus versus each of these flagship super phones, so you can hopefully get a better sense of the primary features and value propositions the iPhone 6 Plus brings to the table versus some of its fiercest competitors. Before we dive in, however, we should point out that the forthcoming Galaxy Note 4 is probably Samsung's closest rival to the iPhone 6 Plus, but since we haven't gotten that in for a hands-on as of yet, that comparison will have to wait for another day. That said, let's take a closer look at Apple's new iPhone 6 Plus, and then we'll compare it to some of the best-selling Android devices on the market currently. The iPhone 6 Plus has a very glossy black face display, and here you're looking at the space gray variant, though there are silver and gold color models as well. The 6 Plus's 5.5 inch IPS display has a native resolution of 1920 by 1080, and it has very smooth edges that make for very clean, smooth lines, but also it's a little slippery to handle as well, generally speaking. On the bottom face of the display is the iPhone 6 Plus's home button and an integrated Touch ID fingerprint scanner sensor. On the top of the display is the iPhone's earpiece, speaker, and 1.2 megapixel FaceTime HD camera with auto HDR and 720p HD recording. On the left edge of the device, you'll find the volume rocker and ring silent switch, which we think more manufacturers should follow suit on employing. It's a handy convenience feature that lets you hit the mute button on an incoming call that much quicker. On the bottom edge, you'll find Apple's lightning connector based sync and charge port, a speaker port area, microphone, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone mini jack. And finally, on the right edge is the on off sleep wake button, as well as a micro SIM card slot. Finally, on the back side is the iPhone 6 Plus's rear 8 megapixel EyeSight camera with optical image stabilization and a sapphire crystal lens cover. This 8 megapixel camera also has auto HDR capability and shoots 1080p HD video as well. The first thing to note comparatively about the iPhone 6 Plus is that it is large, as in, make no mistake, this is a true phablet kind of large. Next to Samsung's Galaxy S5, the iPhone 6 Plus is gargantuan. The GS5 sports a 5.1-inch display, while the iPhone 6 Plus has a 5.5-inch display, but it's also thinner at 7.1mm versus the 8.1mm thin GS5. As a result, the iPhone 6 Plus also has a larger top and bottom bezel, and overall is about a quarter inch taller and almost that much wider as well. Again, however, the iPhone 6 Plus is noticeably thinner. Interestingly, the absolutely minuscule bezels comparatively of LG's G3 here on the right allows it to sport the same 5.5 inch display as the iPhone 6 Plus, though at a higher resolution of 2560 by 1440. In a significantly smaller footprint, comparable actually to Samsung's Galaxy S5. It just goes to show you that although Apple has some serious design chops, Perhaps, in an effort to get the iPhone 6 Plus as thin as possible, they flattened out the overall surface area of the device as well. Though the iPhone 6 Plus is definitely thinner, it also kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in comparison. Regardless, if thin is what you're into, there's no question as you can see here versus the GS5 on the left and the second generation Moto X on the right, Apple can say without question the iPhone 6 Plus is thinnest for what it's worth. Build quality wise, the iPhone 6 Plus is very solid with a flat aluminum construction that, regardless of what you think of Bendgate, we think will hold up quite well for all but the most abusive of users. Then again, the new watermark for us in terms of build quality is none other than Motorola's Moto X. 
Here, with its backside bamboo finish, the new Moto X has a strikingly high quality design and feels much more solid, rigid, and substantial in the hand. The 5.2 inch display enabled Moto X, however, weighs nearly a full one ounce less than the iPhone 6 Plus, as does Samsung's Galaxy S5. Though one would hardly call the iPhone 6 Plus heavy by any stretch. Samsung's Galaxy S5 is currently our display yardstick with its 5.1 inch 1920x1080 Super AMOLED display. Super AMOLED offers great saturation, brightness, and contrast. However, though Apple's iPhone 6 Plus has a lower pixel density at 401 ppi versus the GS5's 432 ppi display, we do think Apple balanced colors a bit better with the iPhone 6 Plus, and whites are more naturally white, while the GS5 has a cooler setup overall. In addition, though the GS5 does have excellent contrast and saturation, the iPhone 6 Plus's display with its claimed 1300 to 1 contrast ratio also seems to offer better brightness overall at full power as well. In terms of the user interface, in our opinion, though iOS 8 may be less customizable than Android KitKat, it does have a cleaner, more organized feel versus many of the Android devices currently on the market. The second generation Moto X here is about as stock an Android experience as you can get currently, save perhaps for Google Nexus 5. Frankly, it seems just a little too flat and plain, while on the other hand, the Galaxy S5 with Samsung's TouchWiz UI has a bit too much color and glitz going on, while LG's G3 strikes a cleaner menu appearance similar to that of iOS, it does seem comparatively burdened and cluttered with additional drill down or swipe effort to get to your desired functions iOS 8 just gets what you need done a little bit easier and with what feels like more polish overall. This is personal preference to a large degree, of course, but that's our humble opinion. Ah, but what about performance? First, let's get some quick specs out of the way. The second generation Moto X is powered by a 2.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 quad-core CPU with integrated Adreno 330 graphics and 2 GB of RAM. The Samsung Galaxy S5 is powered by the same processor and memory subsystem as is LG's G3, though the G3 with its 2560 by 1440 display is backed by 3 GB of RAM. The iPhone 6 Plus comparatively is powered by Apple's ARM64 based A8 64-bit dual core processor at 1.38 GHz and is backed by only 1 GB of RAM. In terms of general use, I'll note that the iPhone 6 Plus as well as Samsung's Galaxy S5, the second generation Moto X and LG's G3 all feel very snappy. Whether rendering web pages, punching out emails, texting, or making calls, you'd be hard pressed to pick a decisive winner. However, in the benchmarks, we can see some specific performance characteristics for each device and how they stack up. SunSpider is a simple benchmark that measures the ability of a device and its web browser to process JavaScript, which powers many website interfaces all over the internet. Here you can see the iPhone 6 Plus leads the pack comfortably. Though we should note that Google's Chrome browser, which is the only mobile browser that Motorola bundles with the second gen Moto X, holds that device back considerably. AN22 is an overall system and device benchmark that measures various subsystem performance areas, including CPU, integer, and floating point performance, storage I.O., graphics performance, and memory speed. As you can see here, in terms of time to complete the test, the iPhone 6 Plus jumps out with an early lead. But when it comes to multi-threading performance, the quad-core ARM implementation of the Snapdragon 801 and the Galaxy S5 and second-generation Moto X push them ahead. However, when it comes to graphics and gaming frame rates, Apple's A8 takes the lead in this test and ultimately allows it to take the lead overall, including the top spot in our entire database of reference test data on various devices, including both smartphones and tablets. 3D Mark iStorm shows the same level of graphics prowess for the iPhone 6 Plus, and just look at how it rips through loading the benchmark and getting to work. It's significantly faster in this regard. Conversely, 3D Mark does rank the A8's physics throughput significantly lower than competing Android flagships at roughly half the throughput, likely due to its dual core implementation versus the quad core Snapdragon employed in the Samsung, LG, and Motorola devices. Geekbench shows a similar multi core performance lead for the Snapdragon based devices, though the A8 and Apple's iPhone 6 take the lead in single core throughput.
In terms of frame rates, however, the A8 takes the Android-driven Snapdragons out behind the woodshed. And this test shows Apple's new graphics engine is some 15 to 20% faster depending on the device and test. Further, on the graphics front, GFX Benchmark 3 shows the iPhone 6 Plus with Apple's A8 is easily the fastest smartphone SoC we've tested to date. And though it has comparative fill rate performance, overall geometry setup and throughput translates to much higher frame rates in this test. The only faster chip on the market currently perhaps is NVIDIA's Tegra K1 processor, but admittedly that processing engine is only available currently in tablet devices. With respect to camera performance, the iPhone 6 Plus with its 8 megapixel HD camera, optical image stabilization, panorama, slow mo, and time lapse modes takes some fantastic shots and easily rivals some of the best Android and Windows phone camera systems we've seen on the market. Be sure to check out our full detailed written review in this regard for more on that. In addition, the iPhone 6 Plus's capacious 2915 milliamp hour battery offered us all day uptime. And though the iPhone 6 Plus may not be at the very top of its class in this regard, it certainly is very competitive. Overall, the iPhone 6 Plus is a powerful smartphone, one of the fastest money can buy currently, with what feels like a more polished operating system in some regards versus top Android devices in the market. That doesn't mean that we're suggesting you ditch your Android for Apple's big boy iPhone 6 Plus. For us, the Plus feels just that, a little too big. Apple's effort to flatten and trim down the iPhone 6 Plus in thickness pushed it out needlessly in height and width, such that the device feels enormous versus the 5.2-inch Moto X or the similarly equipped 5.5-inch display of the LG G3, though that device is barely larger overall in size versus Samsung's Galaxy S5. If LG could do it, surely Apple's design team could have trimmed down some bezel as well. Regardless, the iPhone 6 Plus does have an absolutely gorgeous display and it has a ton of horsepower on board the device as well. It all comes down to what you're looking for really in a smartphone, in addition to which smartphone ecosystem you're more comfortable with. Is it iTunes in the App Store or Google Play for you? Make sure you stop by hotharbor.com for our full written review of the iPhone 6 Plus, which should help you a bit more in making your decision in that regard. And subscribe to us here for more reviews, analysis, how-tos, and event coverage. It's Dave Altavilla with hothardware.com and Apple's iPhone 6 Plus. Thanks for stopping by.